one of the first Airbus A320s ever sold to China, simply vanished. No record of commercial flights, no passenger manifests. The aircraft completely disappeared from radar. What happened to it? According to a French documentary, sources allege the Chinese government dismantled it, piece by piece, studying every component, every wire, every rivet. That vanished plane supposedly became the blueprint for China's C919, their answer to Boeing and Airbus. But here's what makes no sense. Despite a massive global shortage of aircraft, airlines around the world are refusing to buy it. Right now, the commercial aviation industry is in crisis. Boeing and Airbus control the entire market. Every single narrow-body passenger jet flying today comes from one of these two companies. Their combined backlog? Over 15,000 aircraft. Airlines are waiting years for deliveries. Boeing stabilized production at 38 aircraft per month as of May 2025 and is seeking approval to increase to 42 per month. Airbus produces around 40 to 45 A320 Neo family aircraft monthly, constrained by supply chain challenges. Between them, they're manufacturing more than one plane every single day, and they still can't keep up with demand. Boeing's situation remains precarious. Ongoing quality issues, production challenges, and regulatory scrutiny have created a gap in the market. Airlines need planes. They need them now. Enter China's C919. On paper, it's the perfect solution. A narrow-body aircraft with 158 to 174 seats, cruising at Mach 0.78, designed to compete directly with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. After decades of development and hundreds of billions in government investment, China finally has a commercial aircraft ready for the global stage. China has unveiled its first ever large passenger jet. Except nobody outside China is buying it. But here's what we've discovered about this seemingly invincible partnership between Boeing and Airbus. Despite their dominance, they're vulnerable. Production bottlenecks, supply chain issues, and Boeing's ongoing quality problems have created the biggest opportunity for a new competitor in 50 years. China recognized this. They invested everything into the C919. The aircraft received Chinese certification. It entered commercial service in 2023. The order book now exceeds 1,200 aircraft. By every measure, this should be China's breakthrough moment. Instead, the C919 has become aviation's most expensive gamble, and it's failing to pay off. The story goes back to the early 2000s. According to a French documentary, sources claim that Patrick Devout, former vice chairman of economic intelligence at Airbus, revealed something that had been kept quiet for years. One of those first A320s sold to China allegedly never appeared on a single commercial flight. Sources suggest it was tracked to a facility where it was systematically taken apart. The documentary quotes him saying, the Chinese took it apart in an effort to copy as much as possible, studying each part of the plane to reproduce them exactly. The documentary further alleges that Chinese hacking groups launched sophisticated operations against Western aerospace companies. They supposedly stole tens of thousands of hours of CFM56 engine test data, integration verification documents, engineering analysis reports from airworthiness certification processes, technical specifications from entire supplier networks. These weren't just blueprints, they were validated engineering solutions. Real-world data that typically takes decades and billions of dollars to develop. Failure mode analysis, material limit parameters, system interface specifications, everything you'd need to build a modern commercial aircraft. The technical similarities between the C919 and the A320 are striking. The C919's fuselage is 38.9 meters long, the A320, 37.57 meters. Wingspan, 35.8 meters versus 34.1 meters. Both crews at exactly Mach 0.78, both carry similar passenger loads. According to the documentary sources, this wasn't inspiration. 
This was systematic industrial espionage. Alain Jouillet, France's former intelligence coordinator, provided testimony that reinforced these claims. His statement suggested this wasn't just about one stolen plane, it was about stolen knowledge on a scale never seen before in aerospace. So China built their plane using borrowed technology. That should work, right? Just copy what works and compete on price. Here's the first problem. The C919 is worse in almost every measurable way. Fuel efficiency. Industry analyses suggest the C919 burns approximately 10% more fuel per seat than the Airbus A320neo, though independent verification remains limited. In an industry where fuel represents up to 30% of operating costs, that's potentially catastrophic. Airlines calculate every penny. An estimated extra 10% in fuel costs means the C919 could be bleeding money on every single flight. Why might it be so inefficient? The engines. The C919 uses the Leap-1C, a modified version of engines used in Western aircraft. But here's the catch. It's heavier. The Leap-1C weighs approximately 3,929 to 3,935 kilograms. The LEAP-1A, used in the A320neo, around 2,990 to 3,153 kilograms. That's roughly 780 to 945 kilograms more per engine. And you need two of them. An extra 1,560 to 1,890 kilograms total, dragging down performance. Range. The C919 can fly 5,555 kilometers. The A320neo, 6,300 kilometers, according to Airbus specifications. That difference eliminates entire route possibilities. Popular routes like Beijing to London, the C919 can't make it. Shanghai to Los Angeles, impossible. Airlines don't buy planes to fly 80% of their routes. They need flexibility. The C919 doesn't provide it. The second problem is even more fundamental. Despite being marketed as China's first domestically developed commercial aircraft, over 90% of the C919's critical components come from Western companies. GE Aerospace supplies the engines and flight control systems. Safran provides the thrust reversers and electrical wiring. Honeywell delivers the landing gear and fly-by-wire systems. Collins Aerospace handles avionics and communication equipment. Western components account for 60 to 70% of the aircraft's total value. This creates an absurd vulnerability. In April 2025, during escalating trade tensions, the United States temporarily suspended exports of CFML EAP-1C engines to China. The impact was immediate and devastating. Comax delivery targets collapsed overnight, from an ambitious 75 aircraft down to just 30. As of mid-2025, they'd only delivered five C919s out of 32 planned aircraft to China's three major airlines. Think about what this means for an airline. You buy a Chinese aircraft to avoid dependence on Western manufacturers. But when something breaks, and things always break in aviation, you need parts from American and European companies. You need technicians trained on Western systems. You need documentation and support networks that exist primarily outside of China. For airlines operating internationally, this is a logistics nightmare. You're flying an aircraft that requires a Western supply chain to function, but without Western certification or support infrastructure. China knows this. They're developing the CJ-1000A, a domestic engine meant to replace the Western LEAP. But certification keeps getting delayed. Initial projections said 2027, then 2029. Current estimates? Not before 2030. That's five more years of complete dependence on the very companies China is trying to compete against. The engine supply disruption exposed just how fragile this entire operation is. Without a reliable domestic alternative, every C919 is a geopolitical hostage. The third problem is production capacity. Boeing stabilized at 38 aircraft per month and is seeking approval for 42. Airbus produces around 40 to 45 per month, also facing supply chain constraints. 
Between them, they're still manufacturing more than one plane every single day. Comac? They delivered 15 C919s through the end of 2024. For 2025, Comac is targeting 30 deliveries, with production capacity being scaled to 50 aircraft annually. Their longer-term goal remains 200 aircraft per year by 2029. The gap between 30 and 200 isn't just about building more factories. Aerospace manufacturing has a brutal learning curve. Your first aircraft costs 10 times more than your hundredth. Your tenth still costs three times more than your thousandth. Boeing and Airbus have been refining their processes for decades. They've solved 10,000 small problems that Comac is just starting to encounter. Tooling precision, quality control, supply chain coordination, workforce training. Each aircraft teaches you something, but you need to build hundreds before you achieve efficiency. Airlines waiting for planes can't wait five years for Comac to figure out mass production. They need aircraft now. When you're choosing between a proven manufacturer delivering in two years or an unproven one that might deliver in five, the choice is obvious. But there's a fourth problem that makes all the others irrelevant for most of the world's airlines. Certification. The C919 has Chinese certification. It can fly in China. That's it. To operate in the United States, you need FAA approval. To fly in Europe, you need EASA certification. Most countries around the world recognize either FAA or EASA standards. Without them, you're locked out of the most lucrative aviation markets on the planet. China is seeking EASA certification for the C919. But the timeline is long. The EASA executive director confirmed the process will take three to six years, meaning certification won't arrive before 2028 at the earliest, and possibly not until 2031. European regulators have raised concerns about production transparency, incomplete source code for flight control systems, and unverifiable safety test results. Questions about whether components meet stated specifications, when your aircraft is built primarily from Western parts but assembled in a system without Western oversight, regulators get nervous. They should. Aviation safety depends on traceability. Every component needs documented proof of compliance. Every system needs validated testing. The C919's hybrid nature, Western components assembled in China using potentially reversed engineered designs, creates a regulatory puzzle that hasn't been solved. Without FAA and EASA certification, the C919 can only sell to countries willing to accept Chinese certification alone. That list is small, very small. So who's actually buying the C919? Primarily state-owned Chinese airlines, China Eastern, China Southern, Air China, carriers with direct government ownership who don't have a choice. Nigeria is actively considering C919 certification for its domestic carriers. Cambodia recently signed orders for the C909, a related aircraft. A few other Belt and Road Initiative countries have expressed interest. But major international carriers? Singapore Airlines, Emirates, Lufthansa, United, Delta? Silence. China's Belt and Road Initiative includes over 150 countries representing 60% of the global population. That sounds impressive until you realize most of those countries have small aviation markets and prefer aircraft certified by Western authorities. Even airlines in Belt and Road countries often choose Boeing or Airbus because they need planes that can fly everywhere, not just within aligned political blocks. The Chinese domestic market is massive, China will become the world's largest aviation market this decade. The order book of 1,200-plus aircraft sounds impressive, but nearly all of those orders come from Chinese state-controlled entities. Outside commitments remain minimal. Boeing and Airbus became dominant because they could sell anywhere. Their aircraft fly every route on Earth. Airlines invest in their planes knowing they'll have resale value, knowing spare parts are available worldwide knowing pilots trained on them can work anywhere. 
the C919 offers none of these advantages. The C919 represents China's ambitious attempt to challenge the Boeing Airbus duopoly, but faces fundamental obstacles beyond reverse engineering allegations. China spent decades and invested hundreds of billions of dollars to break into commercial aviation. According to documentary sources, they allegedly acquired technology from the most advanced aircraft manufacturers in the world. They built an entire aerospace industry from scratch. They certified an aircraft and put it into commercial service. And yet, the C919 remains largely confined to Chinese airlines and select Belt and Road Initiative partners. With only domestic certification, limited production capacity and dependence on Western suppliers for critical components, the aircraft cannot compete in the global market that determines success or failure in commercial aviation. The lesson isn't that reverse engineering doesn't work. The lesson is that modern aircraft are so complex, so dependent on global supply chains, so embedded in international regulatory frameworks that copying technology isn't enough. You need the entire ecosystem. The suppliers, the certification, the support networks, the decades of operational experience that creates trust. While COMAC targets increased production and pursues international certification, the timeline for meaningful global competition extends well into the 2030s. China might eventually build all of that. The CJ-1000A engine might work. Production might scale to 50 or even 200 aircraft annually. EASA certification might arrive by 2031. But by then, Boeing and Airbus will have moved forward. They always do. The C919 struggle illustrates that breaking into commercial aviation requires not just technology, but decades of operational experience, international certification, and trusted supply chains that cannot be easily replicated or acquired through industrial espionage. The C919 isn't competing with today's aircraft. It's competing with yesterday's and still losing.